All right, can I be heard? Am I hearable? We should be good to go. Just getting the pairings ready and then we'll have people stream share. All right, we can get the show on the road. Um, I'm going to watch this match, actually. All right, and then if you guys can just uh, send your challenges. But uh, yeah, go ahead and just send the challenges and go ahead and start, and we can just get this show on the road. Magic transition over to the screen share. How do I uh, make this bigger? Whoops. There we go. Ah, it's cutting off a little bit. How can we fix that? One moment. So now adjust this manually since it's not letting me. There we go. All right, and if you guys uh, want me to turn the music down, just let me know. I'll turn the music up from the arena. Let's see what we got. Looks like uh, Matt gets to go first against Tino. I'm pretty sure he's on Arclight Phoenix. Trying to decide if he wants to keep a five lander. Um, considering he has Brainstorm, uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Let me go ahead and mute myself for these guys though. Considering he has a brainstorm and a fetch, it should be fine. Um, and for some reason, it's not letting me full screen without this in the way. Maybe Todd can help me out with that. So yeah, a brainstorm in response to a brainstorm, and then and then Matt can go ahead and get rid of his. Thank you, Todd. Matt can go ahead and get rid of his extra lands, so that he can uh, tuck him away with the fabled passage. Interesting. I guess he kind of wants some of the lands here just for the ox. Um, doesn't have two, he didn't get two mana flooded considering he drew a bunch of spells. It's pretty good. <laughs> What's up, Tree? You're gonna come stream snipe? For sure, man. All right, we got a Valky coming in hot. Uh, looks like he's gonna be taking the only target, which was Ox of Agonas. Trick to G style commentary. 
Maybe if I had more energy. <laughs> um, maybe next time we play, man. We got to get more players. We didn't have too many people sign up this time, but a lot of people that wanted to play told us they were busy. So unfortunately, we only have uh, five guys signed up right now. But um, what's it called? We're still giving out the box for first place, of course, and probably some additional prizing for all the guys that signed up. Nothing too fancy happening here, but this, the Arclight Phoenix tech kind of takes a while to uh, show some crazy moves. But when it starts getting going, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty scary. I don't know if anybody watched the stream from last week, but Matt pretty much beat me up like five games in a row with the Phoenix deck. I mean, granted, I had no upgrades from Strixhaven, but the, it's still, it's a pretty good deck. Cycles of Sweltering Suns, not going to be too useful against Crackling Drake, so um, that's pretty good. I mean, it's not even that useful against Arclight Phoenix either, and by now Tino should have figured out what deck he's on, considering all the Arclight Phoenixes are just going to hit you, and then they've got haste, you're already dead by the time the Sweltering Suns is going to resolve. Get in with some Valky damage, a little two power action. Draws a Phoenix. I think that's the first one we've seen so far. So he just has to find a way to discard it. Shocks in Steam Vents. I wonder if, I wonder if that two life's going to end up paying, uh, uh, mattering. Flashback Faithless Looting. Pitch Phoenix, of course. Trying to decide what his second discard should be. I don't know. I don't know what it should be either here. Honestly, what do you guys think? Increasing Vengeance seems fine since it has flashback. Passes the turn with Winds of Rebuke up, but he can also Spike Field Passer to the Valky if he really wants to. Just gonna go ahead and take the damage. Makes sense, find out what Tino's gonna do on main phase two before committing to any spells. Wow, it doesn't do anything. I, I respect it, the patience. <laughs> Um, plays his Fable Passage that he just drew. Grabs an island. Only a couple basics left in his deck, so more Fable Passage draws could end up being bad. Finale for strategic planning and increasing vengeance, it looks like. Even though increasing vengeance is slash strike five, it's still a two drop um, mana value. Tino responds with memory lapse. And then we get a Windsor Rebuke in response to that to bounce the Valky, it looks like. Interesting. That turn probably would have been really crazy for Matt if Tino hadn't had memory lapse, so it was uh, it was a good thing he did have that, but um, he is going to have to deal with it again next turn considering memory lapse puts that card on top of the deck. All right. Matt's tapped down, and Tino uses the, ch the chance to get a Nicol Bolas in. Goes ahead and pluses. Matt gets rid of his Spike Field Hazard. Didn't need it, just gets rid of it. Here comes Finale again. Strategic planning and increasing vengeance are the targets. We're going to do three strategic plannings. Grabs Brainstorm off the first one. Ooh, interesting. Grabs an op off the second one, but maybe he wanted a... Uh, I think that was like the only option. And then Pillar of Flame off the third one. Doesn't feel like those are like the best strategic plannings, but brainstorm is always brainstorm. So we'll see how uh, how that pans out. Just gonna go ahead and pillar of flame the Nicol Bolas, and then get his Phoenix into play, so that he can get get it off the board. So pretty good turn for Matt there, getting the Bolas off the board and then summoning an Arclight Phoenix. <laughs> brainstorm and standard. This is actually historic, but yeah. I'm pretty excited to be seeing Brainstorm getting played in like a legitimate format. Not that Legacy is not a format, it's just like all 12 people that play it, um, you know. <laughs> I guess I'm one of those 12, I love Legacy. Hopefully we can get some of those events going pretty soon when Redacted is over. Alright, so plays another Bolas, just uh, does his thing, pluses it. Matt has to find a way to get that one off the board, so he's going to go ahead and start his turn with Brainstorm. Deciding what cards to get rid of. It's a hard choice there, because a lot of those cards are really good. 
puts the Ox and the Thermal Alchemist back on top. Considering they don't have haste, that's probably why he doesn't want to use them. Plays his Storming Entity, and it's cheap from the uh, passive it has, and it scries. Gets rid of both of those creatures, doesn't want either one of those cards. Uh, Matt showcasing some of these really powerful effects in the Is It deck with, with Brainstorm and scries and all this stuff you can do in Field of Passage to get rid of cards you don't want. And then shuffle your deck. It's just pretty, pretty high impact. Finds another Phoenix, gets it in the graveyard. Now deciding how he wants to play his third spell to get it um, revived from the graveyard. Just slashes back a Faithless Looting, nothing too fancy. Pitches Faithless Looting and Fable Passage. We already know he doesn't have too many basics left, so that's probably a good call. And he should be getting a second Phoenix here. Just wondering if he's going to get rid of the Bolas or just go all in at the life total. Looks like he wants to get rid of Bolas. Stormwing does not have haste, so he loses that power there. And Tino had Baleful Mastery, showcasing the cheap version of it, where Matt got to draw a card there, but Tino got to play a two-drop Exile. And the Exile's really going to matter here for the Arclight Phoenix, so that's pretty, pretty high impact. Matt looking at his library, seeing nothing on the bottom, getting a little bit of a... Resolution loss, it looks like, unfortunately. Uh, Tino's hitting us with the Thought Seas. And it looks like it's going to be really bad for Matt there because his hand is super susceptible. I wouldn't want to lose my Crackling Drake here, but the rest of his hand isn't too bad. And he still has that Faithless Looting to work with. The only mode he has available to Bolas is Plussing, but Matt still has to get rid of a permanent or a card. Probably can get rid of one of his extra lands. Looks like he doesn't want to lose any lands here, just to see if he can Faithless Looting into some more spells, so he gets rid of his Thermal Alchemist. Pretty interesting choice. And Tina's going to go ahead and play Nico Bolas the Ravager. He's got both Bolases in his deck. Gets rid of the last card in Matt's hand. Crazy. And in, into a Search for Skanta. So he's going to have a lot of value here on this side. Matt draws a Steam Vents. Not, 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 not too fancy, but going to go ahead and play Faithless Looting. Finds a Phoenix. That's pretty good. But finds another land. So he's going to keep the Phoenix and actually hard cast it. Um, good intuition there for Matt to not just instinctively pitch the Phoenix. And then find some damage to actually shoot at the Bolas to get it off the board. Even if Tino blocks, which he should. He won't be trading with, uh, he won't be able to save his Bolas. So, since he knows that, he goes ahead and trades with the Storming Entity to get it off the board. That prowess can end up mattering later. And the Stormings don't come back. Oh, Extinction Event. Oh, that's probably going to be the game. Gets rid of two Phoenixes with that. Matt is hellbent and doesn't have any flashback cards in the graveyard, it looks like. Draws a Phoenix, though. Going to have a haste, Hasty Flyer. Puts Tino to 11 after he attacks if it resolves. And Tino has a commit, so it looks like the Grixis control deck's going to showcase its power in game one here. As uh, Tino goes ahead and resolves a Chandra. It's, she's uncounterable, so it didn't really matter if Matt even had a counter spell. Not that the Phoenix deck has too many of those. And she's going to go ahead and just plus the game away. Yep, there's a concession from Matt. Pretty reasonable. I think in this position, anybody would concede. And we'll see how he sideboards. Obviously, we're going to miss Tino's sideboard, but um, we'll see what happens here on this side. Brings in a bunch of spells for the control matchup, it looks like. Including Ral, is it Viceroy? That could be really high impact. Gets rid of some of these sweepers. Doesn't really need them against a deck with no creatures. Uh, cuts the upgrades, but it feels like if Tino ends up with a Graph Digger's Cage, that could really punish him. Cut some finales, not too useful. Um, just cutting a bunch of one-ups, it looks like. Yeah, I know we can watch multiple screens, but, um, I don't think Tino's actually streaming his. Let's find out. Oh, uh, actually, you were right. Good call, Tree. Let's see if we can, uh, catch his sideboard. Ah, we missed it. <laughs> well, actually, why don't we go ahead and watch game two from, uh, Tino's perspective. Oh, no, he is sideboarding still. Okay. So, uh, trying to decide. Actually, it looks like he pulled out his Nickel Bolases. I'm surprised. It feels like the Planeswalkers would be pretty good, but he had an Ashiac Dream Render there. That's going to be really good. And we see the Grafficker's Cages as well. So, if Matt did cut his Abrades, he might end up getting punished by Grafficker's Cage. 
Extinction event so good in this matchup because of the exile. And cuts Chandra. So just cutting a bunch of big spells, it seems, and then making sure he has better removal. Fatal Push, obviously not, not the best spell against Arclight Phoenix with its 4 CMC. All right, we'll go back to Matt's side of the board. Quality's a little bit better on this side, but we get to see a little bit of Tino's insight there. A um, couple of spike field hazards, but it's still a two lander technically, and some good spells. No fetch line though, so the brainstorm is not going to be too powerful here quite yet. Matt just plays spike field into a uh, river glide on the blue side for strategic planning on turn two, trying to set up his uh, hand as the phoenix deck does. Finds a faithless looting, but a bunch of other lands, so trying to decide if he wants a land or faithless looting and. Takes the, uh, takes the land. Obviously, the cards from Strategic Planning go to the graveyard, so he can always flash back that Faithless Looting later, assuming Tino doesn't find Graph Diggers. Tino plays Valky on two, does not find a creature to steal, unfortunate for him, and the Valky is kind of looking really weak now. Matt doesn't want to play around with it this game, though, and just goes ahead and gets rid of it with Spike Field Hazard. I kind of respect that decision. Don't want to lose any amount of life um, at all, just, just so you can maybe shocking all your steam vents later or whatever he needs to do. See what Tino can pull off on turn three. Will he find a sideboard card? Does he have the Ashiok, Graph Digger's Cage? No Ashiok, no shot, because he didn't shock in Blood Crypt, obviously. But uh, he could have Memory Lapse here. So Matt, looking at the mana, respecting it, doesn't play his Narset. Gonna go ahead and Strategic Planning. He's holding up Negates as well. Excuse me, he's holding up Negates as well, which I really like because he doesn't really know that Tino took out a bunch of Planeswalkers, but if I'm Matt, I really don't want to see a Bolas resolve at all. Although Negate doesn't do much against the Bolas the Ravager since it's a creature on the front side. Both players just passing, pa passing their turn after playing their lands. Mac in a strategic planning for a third time, it seems. Plays the tap Steam Vents, just holds up Negate, passes the turn back to Tino, asks him what he's going to do. And I think, if I remember correctly, Tino took out all his Nicol Bolas, the, um, the Dragon Gods. Passes it back. Matt has five mana now, so says, I'll go ahead and try my Narset. If you have a counter spell, I got a negate for you, sir. Let's it resolve. Either Tino doesn't have uh, counter spells or does not respect the Narset. And Matt's going to find a Ral is it Viceroy off the Narset uh, minus two ability. Tries to pass the turn back, it looks like, holding up Brainstorm and Negate. Tino fetches with his Fabled Passage on the end of the turn. Gets a Swamp so he can activate his Castle Lockdwain. Takes a bunch of damage there, but really, really wants to draw cards, apparently. Castle Lockdwain, really, really powerful card, but really punishing when you have a lot of cards in your hand and you want to try to pay for that life. Obviously, it deals you one damage for each card in your hand when you draw. When you draw. And it's after the draw, so you're taking that extra card damage, too. But finds a Nighthawk Scavenger with lifelink, so that could actually uh, gain him back that life that he lost. And maybe he's looking like a, like a small genius here. Matt gonna go ahead and brainstorm. Doesn't find the best draws. He was really looking for a field of passage, most likely to shuffle away some bad cards. But even though he put some cards on top of his deck, he's gonna have the Narsa activation. And now all those cards that he didn't particularly want are gone. Plays a Stormwing Entity. This card is so powerful, being a two drop when you've already cast a spell. Finds a Pillar of Flame and Arclight Phoenix from the scry. Trying to decide if he wants to keep the Pillar of Flame, but almost certainly wants to keep the Arclight Phoenix. And uh, checking the toughness on Nightwing Scavenger, sees that it's too much for Pillar of Flame to deal damage with. So deciding if he wants to keep it or not. Kind of a tough decision here for Matt. Actually keeps the Pillar and bottoms the Phoenix, wow. That was the, the last one I expected, but I kind of respect it. And then he passes it back over, holding up negates, not willing to just cast a Faithless Looting for no reason. Tino thinking about attacking Matt. Does not want to get rid of the Narset. Not worried about a Narset that can't minus. Trading with the Stormwing and gaining four life. So negating most of the damage he lost from that earlier Locked Wing activation. 
Passes it back over to Matt. Matt's got a lot of mana and a lot of spells, but um, not enough to play Ral and Negate, so he's going to go ahead and play Narset, respecting Tino's counter magic. Tino lets the Narset resolve, says get as many cards as you want. I will find the answers. Two Mystical Disputes and a Faithless Looting, but um, Matt already has one, so he goes for the Mystical Dispute. Just wants a little bit more counter magic to shore up his match against Tino. And Negate doesn't hit any non-creature spells, so he really needed that Mystical Dispute. In comes a Thought Seize from Tino, though. Really, really powerful card. Probably one of the most powerful cards in Historic right now. And probably going to take this Ral. Yeah, gets rid of the Ral, and now Matt's hand is looking pretty bad here. We could uh, take a quick peek really quick and see what Tino's got going on over on his side. He's going to play Valky, even though he knows it's not going to hit a creature. And he's got... Just a bunch of removal. Okay, we'll go back to Matt's screen. And it looks like Anthony, or Tino, my, my apologies. Tino had two extinction events in his hand, which is really brutal. So he's just ready to get rid of these Phoenixes whenever they show up. Pillar of Flame to get rid of the Valky. Doesn't want any chip damage coming in. I wonder if he'll just play this Thermal Alchemist, though. Interesting. So Tino's going to respond to the Pillar with Fatal Push. Doesn't want his Valky to get exiled. Probably has a way to get it back later and wants to show him a Tybalt. Matt's going to go ahead and play his Thermal Alchemist. Tino's going to show him the second Fatal Push, and now we know that Tino only has two Extinction Events. Matt deciding here if he wants to negate or Mystical Dispute. Sees the two mana up. Assumes that Tino has Memory Lapse. Obviously, we, don't, we know he doesn't have it, but he could have a Memory Lapse here. So Matt not wanting to get blown out says, go ahead and take it. I don't, I don't want to draw a negate again. <laughs> I kind of respect it. Thermal Alchemist is not a super amazing card. You're going to just want to hold up the negate there just in case Tino has a better play. And Matt's sitting here with a lot of cards, even though Tino does have two Extinction events. Um, Cycles of Sweltering Sun, so we know what his draw was. Tapped Watery Grave and just says pass, holding up a ton of removal. Matt finally draws an Arc-like Phoenix, goes ahead and hard casts it. And going to get in for three here, it looks like, unless Tino has a response. Activates Castle Longclay and says, I'll see your three damage and I'll raise you four. So Tino's got a lot of cards in his hand, but he's, in a, he's, in a, he's kind of in a pinch with his life total. Goes ahead and plays Extinction Event. Asks Matt if he's got some counter magic, even though he can see them. And Matt's going to go ahead and say, yeah, I will negate that. And I wonder if Tino drew a counter spell here. Tino did not. So he's just going to say, I'll play Extinction Event into my Bolas. And you don't have counter magic for that, do you? So Matt now having to decide which one of these counter spells he wants to discard gets rid of a Mystical Dispute. Obviously, in Arena, it doesn't matter which one you discard. It doesn't have to necessarily be the one with the Eyeball. The game will assume. Matt draws an island, goes ahead and plays Faithless Looting first, just in case he draws some better spells. Hits two lands, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, kind of go ahead and discard the island and the Steam Vents. Passes the turn back. Arclight Phoenix, of course, can block. It's not required to attack every turn, like most creatures of that uh, variety. Tino deciding whether or not maybe he wants to flip his Nicobolas or do something else that's kind of crazy. We know he has another Extinction event, but he's not trying to cast that on four and then get rid of his own Bolas. Goes ahead and tries to attack at Narset, probably trying to draw some cards this turn. Narset is off the field. Matt not willing to trade with it. Knows that Tino's life total is too short to be tapping down like that. And then Tino's going to cast Extinction event. If this resolves, he's going to get rid of both creatures, so not wanting to flip his Bolas, which um, kind of surprising. Oh, because he has another one. And Matt's going to show him the Mystical Dispute, say, no Bolas for you, sir. But down to just two negates in hand. And then Tino shows him that his last card was a land. Playing it just so that he can activate his Castle Lockdwain later for value, I'm assuming. Matt draws Faithless Looting. Very good draw right here. Because he can play it for uh, the front and the flashback with tons of mana in play. That would be two spells towards Arc Light Phoenix is coming back. Tino draws a spell, goes ahead and passes it back. Matt playing his Thermal Alchemist, possibly just going to pass the turn back and see if we can get some value off of this next turn when it has uh, no more summoning sickness. And Tino pausing, possibly having an answer. 
deciding if Thermal Alchemist is too scary. And let's it resolve. Let's go ahead and take a look really quick at, uh, oh, actually, never mind. I was gonna say, let's go take a look at his last card really quick, but it was just the Baleful Mastery. For full value, Matt's gonna say, no, I actually have cards on you this time. I'm gonna negate that. I'm gonna keep my Thermal Alchemist. Thank you very much, Mr. Seven Live Total. And we're gonna punish you with it. Tino with no cards in hand says, well, then let me draw something else and see if I find an answer. Loses one life to Castle Lockwing activation. And then goes back to Tino's turn, draws another card from the draw step. Did he find an answer? Prismari Command wants to wants to do a Faithless Wedding of himself and then create a treasure for more mana. Pitches two lands, so his draws weren't very good, but finds an Aether Gust, says, get this out of here. Matt's going to say, let me show you my last negate that you knew about. But none of these spells that Tino's getting out of his hands are causing Thermal Alchemist to untap. Tino gets another full value Castle Lockdown activation for only one life lost. Getting to see a ton of cards with this Castle Lockdown. Finds Brainstorm. Response with Brainstorm. I wonder what card he's looking to find here. Maybe Fatal Push off the top of his deck. And does he find it? No, he does not. But it could be something good. Hopefully he didn't Brainstorm lock himself out of the game. Matt's going to activate Thermal Alchemist, play his Arc Light Phoenix, and show him the game. So we're going to see a game three from these guys. Very well played on both ends, and honestly, these decks are so, um, like, thinky. They're very hard to play, both decks. Everything that you do matters every turn, so I'm surprised with how fast that they're playing, and it's kind of actually exciting to see them both play fast-paced, pretty good magic here. Matt thinking about if he wants to make any changes to his sideboard. He knows he's on the draw now, so some of his cards might be better and some might be worse. Has a grape shot there that he's about to cut. Says, I don't need this. Thinking about bringing back some Windsor Rebuke, and he does. I really like that card. Windsor Rebuke is pretty powerful. Doesn't seem to like Finale in this matchup, which is kind of respectable. It's pretty expensive of a spell to just get countered. All right. Kind of funny that Tino's the one wearing the Ral um, profile when he's up against the Ral deck. Although I suppose in Grixis you do have your your uh, Prismari or Is it whatever you prefer. Players just playing their playing their lands and passing it over. The first few turns of these um, of this matchup is pretty boring. Uh, Matt, Matt getting to strategic planning on turn two. Wow, Tino t cast Tessa Talents on the strategic planning, not willing to let Matt draw any amount of cards. So it gets all the strategic planning out of his deck. Says, I don't want you getting any cards in your graveyard or drawing any cards. Strategic planning, obviously, very, very good in these Arc Life Phoenix decks. Matt reading that card because I also didn't know what it did at first. And Tino finds Ashiak on turn three. There's the hate sideboard card for the Phoenix matchup. Minuses on Matt, but doesn't find any cards of extreme value. If he would have hit any amount of Phoenixes there, that would have been really bad for Matt. Matt's gonna go ahead and try to brainstorm here, it looks like. Never mind, he's, yeah, he's thinking between brainstorm and faithless winning, but goes ahead and just brainstorm first. Finds a bunch of lands, but no Fabled Passage. Not that it would matter too much since he's on turn three anyway. Thinking about what cards he wants to get rid of. Cause he knows they're about to get minus by Ashiok. So he's willing to lose a Faithless Winning here and a land and then plays his Storming Entity, scries both cards to the top, says those are the ones I want to lose. I want to protect my Phoenixes as much as possible. Tino just plays a tap land and minuses again, hits two Arc Light Phoenixes with that activation. That could be really terrible for Matt here. We'll see if he can pull it out. Matt, now that Ashiak is at three, loyalty, goes ahead and just gets rid of it with the Stormwing. Pays two life for a Steam Vents, untapped, and passes the turn, the turn back just to hold up double counter spell if he needs it. But pretty brutal there for uh, to have lost so many cards to Ashiok. You can see how powerful that card can be in these types of matchups. 
Match is coming in with some damage. And Todd just confirmed that uh, he got 2 0 by Evan during the buy. <laughs> I don't know if he was taking it serious. He's pretty busy today. A lot of uh, strict saving orders coming in clutch. Uh, we appreciate all you guys have been placing your strict saving orders and uh, coming in all weekend, picking up your product. Tons of places to shop, but you guys choose us, so we definitely appreciate you. Tino finds Nighthawk Scavenger. Really terrific card in this matchup. And Matt hesitates on the Mystical Dispute, seeing that Tino has three lands up, but has Lightning Axe to get rid of this card really fast. This card's Spike Field Hazard. Doesn't do as much damage as Lightning Axe. And gonna get a Prowess Trigger. But Tino finds his Memory Lapse, and then Matt finally shows him the Mystical Dispute. Says, I win this counter war this time, sir. So it's kind of funny that the control deck constantly is having these struggles where the um, prowess deck has way more cards in hand than he does. But the control player has a bit more value per card in terms of how powerful they are. Sees that Tino has three lands again and then doesn't cast his mystical dispute. But Tino got a second Nighthawk Scavenger here. Matt finds Thermal Alchemist, which could be really, really bad for Tino especially considering how many spells this deck can cast. Doesn't want to lose his Stormwing to a Nighthawk, uh, Nighthawk Scavenger, so holds it back. Probably wants to get it off the board before anything, in case Tino decides not to block and just try to trade for life totals and race. Waiting to see what the Brainstorm was. Did he find the cards he wanted, or did he brainstorm lock himself? Of course, he has, he has Castle Lockwing, though, so not a true brainstorm lock. Although, he doesn't have the second Black Source, now that I, rea now that I uh, realize it. And here's Sedgemore Witch. We get to see this card uh, in action. She's pretty powerful. Magecraft makes 1-1s, one and when they die, you gain a life. Otherwise, she's a 3-2 with Menace. Thermal comes again for Mav. Two of them could be really, really bad for Tino here. Holds up the activation on the other Thermal Alchemist. Wants to see if he can get the Mystical Dispute to counter a spell first. Tino casts Nicol Bolas after shocking in a Blood Crypt, knowing that Matt could have Mystical Dispute. Um, Matt going to go ahead and cast the Mystical Dispute anyway, force him to tap down, but get an activation off of his Thermal Alchemist as well. And cast Increasing Vengeance, it looks like, to make sure this Mystical Dispute actually counters the Nicol Bolas. So with the, with the increase in Vengeance, obviously he's willing to uh, double spell here and get a lot of triggers off of his Thermal Alchemist. Otherwise, I don't think it would be worth it to just throw out a Mystical Dispute to not counter a spell, even if it was an extra damage. Matt waited to see how Tino attacks before deciding to activate that Thermal Alchemist again. Tino says, I'll come in for two, go to ten. Feels like that's a safe enough five total. Matt draws Negate, kind of unfortunate, because if he had drawn something else, he could have probably killed Tino right here on the spot. But um, if he drew a non-creature spell, he could still be dead. Thermal Alchemist activations negate whatever spell that Tino just drew. Would be really bad. Nighthawk and Sedgemore both coming in. Matt not blocking at all, doesn't want to lose his Thermal Alchemist. Tino gains two life on the Nighthawk Scavenger, not too much value there, considering it gets much bigger when there's more cards in the graveyard. And then after the, after the land play, Tino's going to activate his Castle Lockedway and lose a life. And Matt's going to activate his Thermal Alchemist, it looks like. Doesn't seem like Tino drew anything of uh, high impact or else he might have activated it already. Thermal activate, um, goes back to Matt. Thermal act Alchemist activations again. Trying to see what Tino has. Cling to Dust to exile his own Nicol Bolas, try to gain some life. And it looks like Matt's going to activate Thermal Alchemist and say, no, sir, I'm going to negate that. And comes back after losing game one to clutch it out, games two and three. And both games looked really rough for Matt there, so you got to give it to him. Really, really well played from both players, and Matt clutches it out. Well played. Um, there's a Facebook question in the chat, Todd, if you can go ahead and help uh, John with that. But uh, that was that match, so let's go ahead and pull up the Discord really quick. I need to get one more result.
2 1. Oh, and Anthony wins 2 0. Oh. All right. Give us just one moment. All right, we're back and uh, we got the final pairing. So it looks like it's gonna be Evan who just won his last uh, round against Matt, who we just saw beat Tino. Oh, I think he might actually be paired up against the wrong person. Let me double check, I didn't uh, miswrite that. Oh, I'm watching Tino's match. Apologies, but we're trying to watch Evan here. There we go. Good. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. First time we're running something like this, but I appreciate you guys sticking around with us. I didn't even get the, the face cam set up in time, so hopefully that's not too much, uh, too much of a problem. And I hope to see more of you guys next time. First place is getting a set booster box, so and we'll have additional pricing based on entry and we'll like, we'd like to run more of these online arena events in the future. All right, so Evan's actually playing the Rogues deck, it looks like. We got to see a lot of this deck in the past week doing really well at some of these online arena tournaments. Goes ahead and keeps this hand, even though he doesn't have, um, technically his second land is tapped, but he has two IOKs, so we get to finally see how powerful, well, three Inquisitions. We're gonna see how powerful this card is pretty soon. Just making sure I'm muted so I'm not talking over the players and giving away their information. Oops, looks like we lost access to Evan's screen there. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so Evan sees Spike Field, Lightning, and um, two Spike Fields and Lightning Axe and trying to decide which one he wants because uh, the rest of the hand is all land, so the Spike Fields are effectively the same. Place his second land, probably just gonna fetch for an island, but plays IOK again. Says, let me see what else I can get rid of. Draws Crackling Drake and Grape Shot. So 
Evan deciding if he just wants to get rid of the removal or if he wants the creep shot here. Hard to say, but goes ahead and gets rid of the second spike field. Maybe he can cut, uh, he can pseudo cut Matt off of lands here. Matt's gonna just activate his Fable Passage, make sure he has three lands on turn three. Evan most likely gonna do the same with his Fable Passage, unless he wants to try to draw a land that he would have possibly fetched away. Matt's gonna play a Steam Vents tapped and then just do nothing, holds up Lightning Axe and possibly a Counterspell. Evan finds his island, draws Drown in the Lock, pretty powerful, especially after he's gotten cards in Matt's graveyard already. Gonna go, and, excuse me, gonna go ahead and cast a third Inquisition, really, really rip Matt's hand apart. Takes the Lightning Axe, says, I don't want any removal, and the Lightning Axe is gonna be able to discard the Arc Light Phoenix, so he definitely doesn't wanna see that. And then plays his Wind Robber. A lot of flyers in this Rogue deck too that could actually punish the Phoenix deck, considering he would have so many more blockers. Matt's gonna find a land and play his Crackling Drake, draw a card, and then Evan's gonna say, I actually am gonna drown that, don't wanna see that. Get your card, sir, but not your creature. Attacks Matt for one, exiles, a, or discards a Brainstorm off his deck, really powerful, and then just plays a tap land, doesn't really need Fatal Push, which would, be, which would be the only spell he could cast there. Matt's gonna find a Brainstorm. Deciding what cards he wants to put back. Maybe he wants to get rid of the ones that Evan knows about, and he does, so that Evan has no knowledge of Matt's hand. And Matt's gonna go ahead and play Winds of Rebuke to bounce that card, and then make each player mill so he can get rid of that Arc Life Phoenix he just put on top. Really well played from Matt there. Plays a Pillar of Flame to get the third spell and summons an Arc Life Phoenix. Kind of seen uh, Matt showcase what really powerful effects that Phoenix deck can do. Sorry about that. Looks like we got a phone call on our end. Apologies. Evan just going to play a Wind Robber. Evan getting a lot of damage here between Pillar of Flame and Grape Shot. Going to lose his Wind Robber to one Grape Shot of the three it looks like there are but he's gonna sack it in response to draw a card and not lose total value off of it and he's gonna have revolt triggered for fatal push to get rid of any arc like phoenixes he wants this turn obviously matt's gonna present the attack before force him to have fatal push and has an ox of agonos to try to draw cards evan just gonna go ahead and oh looks like he's debating it does not want to grab loris wants to hold up counter magic and removal and Matt draws a Thermal Alchemist, really good draw, and he can still cast his Ox, it looks like. So Matt's, uh, Evan's thinking about countering the Thermal Alchemist, but says, maybe I want to counter the Ox instead. Obviously, for those who don't know, Ox of Agonos is similar to Battle Reveler. When it enters the battlefield, you discard your hand and draw three cards. But obviously, Matt is hellbent, so he's just going to end up drawing three cards, which is super high impact. Evan going to go ahead and let the Thermal Alchemist resolve, says he does not want to let his opponent Ancestral Recall. Still has a Fatal Push for the Thermalchemist anyway, if it's a problem. And this way he can still summon his Soaring Thought Thief, assuming Matt doesn't decide to just exile five cards out of his graveyard. Matt looking to see what five cards he wants to get rid of. He has plenty of cards in the graveyard to get rid of. Summons the Ox with Escape. Matt's gonna cast this, uh, Evan's gonna cast the Memory Left on this, put it on top of his deck. Says, if you want this, you gotta cast it the hard way. And then go ahead and play a Soaring Thought Thief and start exiling cards or milling cards off the top of his deck with the rogues as anybody who's played against rogues knows. Um, so he's actually gonna get rid of this ox forever, not letting Matt draw those three cards that he really wants. Evan finds Brainstorm, puts two lands on top of his deck and then showcases the power of Fabled Passage here that he plays as his land for turn. He's gonna be able to get rid of these lands so he doesn't end up drawing them. And then mills cards off of Matt's deck with Thieves Guild Enforcer enter the battlefield effect and then the attack trigger from Soaring Thought Thief gets rid of a lot of cards including the Ox but that means the Ox is in the graveyard again for Matt to be able to flashback. And now deciding if he wants to uh, kill this Thermal Alchemist before I get a chance to activate and he does. I agree with that play. Just don't want to lose any amount of life to that guy especially when you're already halfway there. 
Matt finds another Thermal Alchemist, though, and goes ahead and plays that. So maybe it's even better that Evan got rid of the card because it would have been brutal to play against two of them. Let's take a look at the match from Matt's side of the field really quick. So Matt deciding what cards he wants to exile for escape. Picking out five bad cards, I'm assuming. One of them is Grapeshot. Interesting. I, I was going to say, maybe not Grapeshot. Unless, I mean, maybe he has no way to get them out of the graveyard anyway, so it shouldn't matter. And then resolves his Ox of Agonos. This could be really bad for Evan now that uh, Matt drew three cards, but he does not know that Matt threw, drew three lands, which is uh, pretty brutal. Evan going to go ahead and activate his Fable's Passage, shuffle away those two lands off of the top of his deck, and get another land out of his deck so he's drawing even fewer. Draws a card for turn, has a chance to get his Loris. Looks like he does. Grabs Loris out of his sideboard with the new version of the Companion mechanic. And thinking about whether or not he wants to attack, and he does. Tries to get more cards in the graveyard so that Thieves Guild Enforcer can be a 3-2 with Death Touch. It is not currently. Matt draws Arclight Phoenix and has a land as well. Going to go ahead and hard cast that, try to get some guys in. And Evan's going to deny that with Memory Lapse. Says put that back on top of your deck. Draw a bad card again, please. And Matt's going to say, well, I'm going to attack you with my 5 drop, and your Thieves Guild does not have Death Touch right now. So obviously Evan doesn't block, trying to, tries to see if he can get some death touch on this guy next turn, and then trade with the Ox for value. Evan plays his Luris, finds the Merfolk Windropper out of his graveyard, really good value play. The Rogue Trigger will put the Arlie Phoenix in Matt's graveyard though, something he doesn't want. However, he does want Matt to have at least eight cards in his graveyard for the Thief Guild Enforcer. So he goes ahead and attacks with Soaring Thought Thief. Looks like he's got eight cards in Matt's graveyard now, and his rogues are buffed, and so is Steve Guild Enforcer from its own ability. Kind of an interesting matchup where one player is drawing a ton of cards and wants cards in the graveyard, and the other guy wants you to draw cards and put cards in your graveyard. So it's just about whether or not one person does too much of the other to help the other player out. Matt gonna be doing a lot of damage with the Thermal Alchemist and then activates a strategic planning to untap it. Finds Finale of Promise, so activates Thermal Alchemist, then casts Finale, untaps Thermal Alchemist, gets a Lightning Axe and Grape Shot, and that looks like it's going to be lethal. And then he's going to go ahead and Lightning Axe the Luris, and then Creep Shot, and then Untap the Alchemist, and this is more than enough damage. Evan just going to go ahead and say All Resolve, just to show, just to let uh, Matt finish him off, not going to just concede. And Creep Shot, being Creep Shot, does its thing. Uh, Storm is legal and historic. <laughs> All right, so game two. How does Matt want a sideboard here? Did he lose his sideboard? Uh oh, we might have to have we might have to fix this match. Um, for some reason, Arena has this super terrible bug where you don't get your entire sideboard for some reason. So let me go ahead and shoot them a message and just have them restart the match and then have Evan concede. All right, we got that fixed pretty quickly, thankfully. But uh, yeah, it's just a very, very annoying bug from the eSports Ready MTG Arena software. <laughs> so they're gonna go ahead and restart. Obviously, Evan's just gonna concede game one since he had already lost. And they're gonna try to make sure that it's the proper match type or whatever Arena asks us to do so that we get our whole sideboard and not seven cards for some reason, as if that makes sense. All right, let's hope this worked. Seven cards again. All right, what's going on here? Let's try a different match type, I suppose. Let me go ahead and shoot them a message really quick. I'm going to just change scenes while we get this worked out.
I'm sorry, what? Oh, okay. I think we did the historic challenge match, and that's what bugged it. Because round one was a regular challenge match for me, and it worked fine. Yeah, just challenge match, best of three. All right, sorry about that, guys. It looks like we managed to fix it. And there's the full sideboard. Uh, Esports ready, by the way. <laughs> All right. Um, let me just make sure I'm muted. We were talking in the chat to make sure we can get this fixed. And yeah, so he's going to bring in, it looks like Narsets. Thinking about Flame Sweeps. Also thinking about possibly Rouse. Uh, is it Viceroy? Cuts the Winds of Rebuke, says those are not good, neither is Pillar of Flame. And goes ahead and cuts just a Faithless Looting and a Brainstorm, just doesn't really care for those uh, singular draw spells. It's kind of interesting that he doesn't go for like maybe Opt instead of Brainstorm. I think that, I would, I would feel like Brainstorm is just like, a, like on a way different power level there, but pretty interesting nonetheless.
Oh, so sorry about that, guys. My mic was muted there. But uh, yeah, it looks like Evan was willing to sacrifice his Gravedigger's Cage to get rid of a Thermal Alchemist on Matt's side, not wanting to deal with that card, even though he had Gravedigger's Cage in play. He says, I'll find another way to deal with your graveyard. Matt's going to go ahead and cast Crackling Drake. Evan's going to decide whether or not he wants to let this one resolve. Finds John in the lock, says, I'll counter it. Matt has the option to Mystical Dispute, but Matt, uh, Evan would just pay the three mana. Has another Graph Tigger's Cage, though, so it doesn't end up mattering. And now Matt is kind of in a pickle where he has to kind of find an upgrade here or find a different way to kill him without the Arc Light Phoenixes. Kind of go ahead and play his Faithless Looting instead of just casting Stormwing on 5. Might as well play the Stormwing on 2. And deciding what cards he wants to get rid of. Pitches Mountain and Finale. Keeps the Ox of Agonos in his hand. I kind of respect that. Just the Ox can be better if you cast it twice. Plays a Stormwing, holds up Mystical Dispute. Going to get to Scry here anyway. Keeps both cards on top. Says I want to be able to draw cards and maybe possibly play lands or have one damage available to shoot the uh, Thieves Guild or the Merfolk Wind Robbers. And he still has Faithless Looting to activate as well, so he should be in fine shape. Evan's going to go ahead and enter the story, but Matt's going to say no thanks, sir. But now he doesn't have that Mystical Dispute anymore. Evan's going to play Burnfolk Wind Robber. That's probably going to see a Spike Field Hazard pretty soon. And play Pool Lorse out of his sideboard into his hand with the Companion Mechanic. Matt's going to opt, draw the Spike Field Hazard most likely, get a Prowess Sugar, and then likely... Uh, well, actually, never mind. I was going to say likely we're going to see him draw the one damage and shoot the Merfolk Wind Robber, but he just assumes that it's going to be sacrificed for a card anyway, so he bottoms it, draws a Thermal Alchemist, which is really powerful, then goes for an attack. Evan's going to block and then sacrifice his Merfolk Wind Robber for, for value, get a card, and Matt's going to just play Thermal Alchemist and pass it back. So will we see Evan play his Loris and run it into possible removal? Looks like we will. And he's going to play Merfolk Wind, Wind Robber, most likely, since he already... Oh, actually, he can't because of Gravedigger's Cage. Um, so his own Gravedigger's Cage is actually kind of hurting Evan here, but he's thinking probably that Loris with Lifelink is good enough. Doesn't know that Matt has an Ox of Agonos. So Matt kind of baiting the Loris here, but Evan had an Aether Gust to answer it. Puts the Ox back on top of his deck. Matt going to go ahead and attack for three with no prowess. And now if Evan wants to attack here... The blocks from Thermal Alchemist don't look very good, and Evan can gain some life. So Evan gaining three life here, pretty, pretty high impact, considering that's three Thermal Alchemist act activations. And then plays a Wind Robber. Remember, not out of his graveyard, though. Matt going to go ahead and just play th uh, activate Thermal Alchemist, go back to his turn, try the Ox again. Does Evan have an answer? And he does, so it's another Memory Lapse effect. Puts the card back on top of Matt's deck. Says, one more turn without it, please. I'd like to gain some life. And flashes in Soaring Thought Thief. So if he really wanted to, he could double block and kill the uh, Stormwing, but doesn't get at doesn't attack. Uh, Evan saying he, or Matt saying he wants to hold back to Stormwing in case he can block Lurs with it. Evan goes at, go ahead, does a go ahead attack all Alpha Strike. Stormwing Entity's going to block Soaring Thought Thief. Everything else is going to come in. Merfolk's going to mill a card off the top of Matt's deck. And Loris is going to lifelink Evan up to 22. Matt's going to go ahead and get a Thermal, Activi Thermal Alchemist activation in before the turn ends. Draws a land. Not very good, but still has Faithless Looting. Actually does not have Faithless Looting. Grifter's Cage looking especially good here. But Matt's going to hold the land in his hand and pretend he's got something good. Evan go, goes ahead and just attacks with Luris, says, I'm willing to trade now. They, I've gained enough life with this, and Luris is not getting me cards anyway. And Matt says, I'll block with Thermal Alchemist. I don't want to lose my Stormwing, but I'll activate it, so you only gain two life. All right, Matt draws strategic planning. Pretty good. Uh, thought about it for a second, said, do I want to tap with the mountain, but decided two islands is okay. 
finds increasing vengeance and brainstorm decides brainstorm is better wants to dig a little bit deeper into his deck doesn't that attack looks like he wants to try to block and then get a prowess trigger in with brainstorm which would be pretty solid on his end Evan plays a swamp as his land for turn has two cards in hand will he attack or will he hold back Says, I don't want to attack anymore. I'm assuming you're holding spells. I respect that play from Evan. Forces Matt to just brainstorm on his turn now. But he got an extra draw out of that since nothing kind of happened there. Finds Arc Light Phoenix and Crackling Drake off of that. Puts a Faithless Looting and a land on top of his deck. The Faithless Looting not being very good, apparently, since it can't be played from the graveyard. Plays Crackling Drake. Draws a card. Going to get that land back. Plays the land for turn, it looks like. Or does not, rather. Holds the... Holds the land back so he can probably discard the Faithless Looting next turn and still has the mana to cast his Opt. I like that play from Matt there. He might actually potentially even hold his Opt so that he has more spells, and it looks like he does. Evan just passes the turn back, and then Matt plays Arc Light Phoenix Hardcast. Attacks with an 11 power Crackling Drake. Evan, of course, has Merfolk Wind Robert to be able to just block and sack. And that's what he's, that's what he's going to do, it looks like. He still has a lot of life, so it would be two attacks from the Crackling Drake, but if Matt had like a spike field hazard there, that would be really, really bad for Evan. Evan got to draw a card from the Morpher Wind Robber. Let's see if he has any answers. Obviously, you see all those cards from Luris that he would like to cast, but can't because of the Graftigger's Cage. However, I think he's willing to make that trade considering all the cards that he's cutting Matt off of in his own graveyard. Matt goes to his turn, casts an Opt, sees... An Arc like Phoenix decides now is the time to Faithless Looting, get some Prowess Triggers, draw some cards, pitches the um, Arc Light Phoenix in a land, it's look, it looks like, unless he's just going to pitch two lands. Wow, so he pitches just two lands, which uh, is because the Gravedigger's Cage prevents the Arc Light from coming in, and he just wants to try to hard cast this later, but still finds strategic planning to get more Prowess Triggers. Find Spike Field Hazard too. That could be really good if Evan were trying to Merfolk Wind Rubber. But instead, he's just going to use it for damage and get another Prowess Trigger. So effectively, this card does two damage. It just became a shock. Arc Light Phoenix tries to come into the battlefield. Graft Digger's Cage says, No, sir. As you can see by Arena highlighting it for you. And Evan's going to be attacked for lethal. Plays a Thieves Guild Enforcer. And it looks like he's going to be uh, finished off here. So Matt went ahead and 2-0'd. Um, pretty good play from both players, but uh, Phoenix Tech showcasing its power against the deck that helps it by putting cards in its graveyard. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find the other results really quick, and I'll be right back. Uh, I have a question. Is there a split or no? Hey, Matt. Oh, I lost twice. Ooh. You up for a split? Or not? Nah? I don't mind playing a box if you wanna. Yeah, splitting a box work works with me. Yeah. yeah. I'm not trusting my Phoenix luck after <laughs> match yeah. one of the yeah, I've been watching cards you. getting zero. I've been finishing my game so far.
I think I was coming through on the stream anyway when I muted my mic because of the Discord, but that's fine. So you guys can uh, hear what's going on. It turns out that Anthony and Matt want to split for the first place for the box, but they're going to go ahead and play it out for us anyway on stream just so we can see some cool games. Um, and I don't actually remember what Anthony's on. It's like, I think it's like his own brew, if I'm not mistaken, but it's like a Mardu deck. And it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. Where's Jarrett Rocha? You want to 1v1 him in MTG and Call of Duty? Does Jarrett know a Mike Baker? <laughs> Jarrett's actually in the shop with us right now, but he's, uh, he's busy pricing out a collection for one of our customers. All right, so we get to see this Marty deck play against the Phoenix deck. Should be kind of interesting. Matt's turn one Faithless Looting. That's kind of interesting. Oh, but has two Faithless Lootings. Just gets rid of them right away. Anthony deciding how he wants to play his lands out. Just shocks in Sacred, Found uh, Sacred Foundry instead of Gala Shrine. Doesn't really need the black man, it looks like. But once Young Pyromancer are in play as fast as possible. Matt is brainstorming on... Uh, without having played a land, so that strikes me as somebody who's digging for lands. Let's hope we don't see a brainstorm lock as a game one. And finds the land, so that's good. And he's gonna shock it in, play Pillar of Flame, get rid of the Young Pyromancer, as any smart person would. Always get rid of the Young Pyromancer. You do not want to let that thing start generating tokens. Especially against a deck that could potentially have black for village rights in this format. But Anthony's going to show him the second young Pyromancer, Sedgemore Witch, who mage crafts for 1-1s, one and they actually gain life when they die. And Matt's going to just pay the three life from the ward ability to just say, let me get this off the board right now. I don't want you making any guys. And T Anthony drawing a Lightning Helix, Mystical Archive. Very cool. And in this deck... Pretty sweet. This is almost like his take on Martyr Pyromancer from Modern before Faithless Looting got banned. It's a pretty sweet deck and pretty awesome to see Faithless Looting getting played again. It paid for the sins of another. <laughs> so gets the Sedgemore Witch back into play, has a Lightning Helix, Lightning Helix on top of his deck and in his hand. So this actually might be a bad matchup for the Phoenix deck. I guess we'll see. We'll find out. Matt taking three life again to get rid of the Sedgemore Witch because of the ward ability. And then finds three Phoenixes, so maybe this is going to be over really fast. So now Anthony has a decision whether or not he wants to uh, Young Pyromancer and then play Phoenix Helixes, but he just goes ahead and waits until combat to cast his Helixes. Knows that game one Phoenix doesn't have too much counter magic. Says, I'll gain some life, sir, and I'll put those back in the graveyard. Matt's like, that's fine. I'm going to strategic planning. We're going to find a way to do it again. Gets, a, gets the fourth Phoenix in the graveyard. This could be really bad for Anthony here. Um, Anthony, deciding how he wants his turn to look, plays a young Pyromancer and Usher of the Fallen. 2-1 with Boast that apparently makes 1-1s um, one -ones as well. So just a bunch of guys that make... Uh, tokens and he just goes wide it looks like but none of them fly so kind of bad position for him I think Matt's gonna be able to triple spell and just get rid of him considering he has faithless looting and increasing vengeance in the graveyard he would only need like a finale of promise and there's the finale of promise so it looks like Matt is about to triple spell for pillar of flame and Oh, actually, he didn't, unless he misclicked something. Hmm. It's possible that he might have misclicked something. It looks like he's checking his graveyard, but I don't know what happened there. But it ended up going to combat, and he's not getting his phoenixes. I think he was trying to cast Finale of X to get um, Faithless Looting and Pillar of Flame, so I'm not sure what happened there. But it looks like he's uh, trying to figure that out himself. Maybe we missed something. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but um, he's 
He's trying to figure it out. He said he should have been able to cast Spike Field Hazard as well. Looks like he passed it back. I thought he cast um, Pillar of Flame, which is an instant. You should be getting an instant and a sorcery. So if, if I'm not mistaken, he should have been able to cast Faithless Looting, not Spike Field Hazard. But um, they, w they went ahead and just played it out anyway. So Anthony got to play Exodus, summoned a 3-6 Avatar. And Matt going to just try to summon four Arclay Phoenixes. There's the spike field hazard. <laughs> Ended up not mattering anyway, uh, as Anthony didn't draw a way to deal with the Arc Light Phoenixes and got all four of them. So I guess you guys can see how crazy the Arc Light Phoenix deck is when it gets all of them. I, me I remember having a match last week with Matt where he didn't get a Phoenix until like 40 cards into his deck. It didn't end up mattering because he had like uh, Thermal Alchemist and stuff, but it could be really punishing. Only one Layla of the Void in the sideboard for Anthony. Uh, really, really thinking he's just going to get lucky there, I'm assuming. Just uh, only need one. <laughs> I'm just going to mulligan until I get it. Uh, cut some claims. Cuts a pl plume of the forbidden. Plum the forbidden. I'm butchering all these cards names. Oh, he does have Clarion Spirit as well. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking maybe he has too many token generators, but I really like what he's doing with, his, with this deck list. Have you guys gotten to play with Exus at all in Commander or any other formats? Uh, that card is pretty interesting. Only one land, but has a Faithless Looting if he wants to try to risk it. <laughs> Anthony saying, what is going on with my luck today? But decides to keep it and risk it. I mean, he does have um, Cling to Dust that he could discard, and it, it's still playable later. Has a one drop with Usher the Fallen. Goes ahead and plays that, so he sees if he can just draw a land naturally. Gets Pillar of Flame for his trouble. Draws the land naturally, though, and it's a black source, so he can go ahead and play his young Pyromancer into a spike field hazard. <laughs> There's an opt, and does he find the land? Finds the red source, finds the spike field hazard. Or oh, lightning axe, wow, but pitches a phoenix. Had to use the lightning axe on that one. Doesn't draw a third land, so goes ahead and casts Faithless Looting. Says, I'll try to get one the hard way. Um, pitches Plum and Extus, it looks like. Or possibly Cling. Actually, I think he needs to Cling to Dust because of the Arc Light Phoenixes. So it looks like he's going to pitch Extus and keep his Shock. Could probably reasonably get rid of the Shock here. Just depends on whether or not you expect to be casting that expensive creature. And he does not, since he's already missing lands. And plays Blood Crypt, deciding whether or not he wants to shock it in, and he does. And then does not cast Cling to Dust, being patient with it. Wants to see if Matt first um, tries to cast three spells first. Matt goes ahead and taps out for Finale, targets Opt and Pillar of Flame. That will be three spells for the... Arclight Phoenix, unless he wants to cling to dust a spell and then try to draw a card, and then that would turn off the triple spell. But um, either play seems interesting. Get rid of the Phoenix and be safe forever, get rid of the other card, turn it off for this turn, and then maybe draw a card that can help you out later. Hard to say. And it looks like he is going to go after the opt, turn off a draw, turn off the triple spell, and then maybe draw into a fourth land so he can try to flash back to cling to dust later. Oh, he does not. Okay, so then he's going to go ahead and just cling the Phoenix. All right. I still prefer that play anyway. Just get rid of the Phoenixes. Don't risk it. 
Um, draw your fourth land naturally if you get a chance. You have plenty of removal. You have some life gain from the helix. And you have your own uh, faithless looting as well to work with. Draws the fourth land. I think that that fourth land is uh, pretty good for him, even though he doesn't seem to be happy about it. Um, I think I'd rather have that land so I can start flashback and cling to dust, honestly. I guess it's escape, not flashback. It matters, but uh, it's a very good spell. Goes ahead and plays the red side of the black red flip land. And then Matt finds Crackling Drake. So Anthony has a chance here to double spell it and get rid of it. And it looks like he's thinking about that. Does not do it though. Finds Witch's Vengeance. I think that actually be might be better for him. He could Witch's Vengeance and Shock. But thinking about Faithless Looting, it looks like. And he does go ahead and flash back to Faithless Looting. Finds Sedgemore Witch and Ecstasy. Not very good draws, considering he could probably use a land here. But we'll see what he does. I suppose he could also just uh, take a couple hits from the Crackling Drink before he's too worried about it. It's only a four power. Trying to figure out what cards he wants to discard. Likely it'll be Exodus again. I don't think it's that important for what he's trying to do, which is just survive. And maybe the Shock actually gets r r rid of Witch's Vengeance, um, just so he can have the Shock in case Matt probably revives some Phoenixes. Which makes sense, but he loses the ability to get rid of Crackling Drake if he does that. And there's Storming Entity, so that's probably what the target of Lightning Helix is going to end up being. Storming lets Matt scry. Puts the one on top, one on bottom, so likely we're going to see some Phoenixes soon. Castle Arden Veil, vale, more token generation for the Mardu deck. Anthony's going to play his Sedgemore Witch, and then Lightning Helix the Storming Entity. Make a Pest, and I think those Pests are going to end up mattering with all that life gain. He should also have a decent amount of cards in his graveyard for Cling to Dust in case Matt starts getting the access to Arc Light Phoenixes. Anthony's just, or uh, Matt's just going to cast a Grape Shot for no value on Storm and get rid of the Pest. Doesn't want to deal with it, it seems. And then cast Finale for Lightning Axe and Grape Shot. Uh, so that's what he needed the Grape Shot in the graveyard for. And he's going to get some Storm Triggers. Targets the Lightning Axe on Satchmore Witch to uh, lose three life. And then the Storm Triggers are all going to go at Anthony. Lightning Axe is going to finish off Satchmore Witch. And that's going to be seven damage from Crackling Drink at Anthony. Puts him to six and puts him in lethal range of the Drake. Technically, Anthony's still not dead because he can cling. And that'll gain him two life if he hits Arc Light Phoenix. But we'll see if... Matt drew a spell here to make the Crackling Drake have 8 power. Um, Exile Storming Entity. Kind of find 5 cards in his graveyard to get rid of. And gain 2 life. Or Oh, it's gain 3 life. It's even better. I didn't realize it was so good. So it gets rid of the Storming Entity. Not the best target, but needs the life gain. Goes to 2, and we'll see if uh, Pillar of Flame was drawn. It doesn't seem like it was. And he finds Claim. Is Claim going to be good enough? Finds the Young Pyromancer out of the graveyard, and he can give it haste, I suppose, but it looks like uh, Matt's going to win this one. Gives it to Fame. Matt says, I'll braid, and I'll give you the 2-0. And that's the match. Pretty well played. Uh, the Martyr deck was interesting, but Arc Life Phoenix just showcasing its power. We're seeing how strong... Faithless Looting and Brainstorm are, and this format is looking really, really fun. Well, I hope you guys had some fun. I think we're going to call it there. I don't think the other matches are still going on. They all seem to have ended, as theirs weren't for as much prize contention. Um, hopefully, we can see more of you guys next time. We'd like to do another um, win -a box type event uh, on Arena in the future, and more and more people seem to be getting interested in Arena. They're pretty fun. Watsi presents the challenge of making Arena kind of hard, to um, implement only because of uh, 
the like the the game seems kind of buggy sometimes and there's no real tournament structure but hopefully they'll do that in the future and then we can uh get some of that going for you guys otherwise we're gonna call the stream here and we'll catch you guys next time peace I'll be in there Monday. Four or five works for me. Alright then. Yeah, those are some nice games.